Okay, friends, in this screencast, we get to talk ever so briefly about how to codify the definition of a limit. Because what we sort of say when we talk about what a limit is, is, is we sort of say if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, uh, then when f of x is really close to l, x is close enough to c. If I can get x really close to c, then f of x is really close to l. And what I'd like to do is deal with those. So, for example, picture time. Consider the following. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Uh, this is sine x over x. And you and I both know that we cannot figure out the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x just by substituting 0. Because both sine of 0 and 0 are 0. So I might ask myself, what is it? And then I might look at this graph, and I might say, well, heck, it appears that that limit is 1, because there's 2, and there's 1. So I might say, you know, I might be bold enough to erase the question mark and say, 1? But it'd be nice to know for sure that that was it. So here's what we do. We imagine that the limit is, in fact, 1. Let's put a band around 1. Let's say that, that I'm OK being away from that 1 by 0 0.2. 0 0.2 on either side. So that's 1.2. That's 0 0.8. And I should probably have written those closer to the ends. Here's the thing. If I want to get within 0.2 of the limit, is there an interval of x values around 0 that does the job? And it turns out that there is. If I stay between negative 1 and positive 1, then my function will always be inside the red band. And that means that if I want to get this close to the limit, then there is an interval that allows that to happen. Well, 0.2 is not very far away. Uh, what if I want to get really close? What if I'm, I'm really, really interested in getting really, really close? And I let the difference from 1 be only 0.004. That's as far as I'm willing to go. I want to get really, really close to 1. Is there an interval of x values centered at 0 that trap the function within the green band? And the answer is actually yes. If I were to stay between negative 0.15 and 0.15, then the function would be inside the green band. Here is what we mean when we talk about limits. When we talk about limits, we say, I want to be this close to 1. Um, in the red case, we would call that epsilon 0.2. And in the green case, we would call that epsilon 0 0.004. That's how close we want to be to the actual limit value. And once we say that, we find a delta. In this case, delta is 1. And in this case, delta is 0.15. And we say, you know what? If you want to get this close to the limit value, you just have to get this close to the x value. And that does the trick. If you want to get this close to the limit value, you can get this close to the x value. And that does the trick. Uh, let's define things more formally. Suppose f of x is defined 
for all x in an open interval containing c except maybe c. And the reason we have to say that is because there could be a hole in the function. Then the limit as x approaches c of f of x is L if, and here's where it gets weird, for every epsilon that's greater than zero, there exists a delta also greater than zero such that the difference between f of x and the limit is less than epsilon whenever the difference between x and our c value is less than delta. Wow. So in other words, no matter how small I make this epsilon band, if I were to take my purple marker and make an epsilon band that were, were really, really, really small, so small that I couldn't even do it justice here, if I were to make epsilon point zero 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 one, then there would be some delta band within which the function is trapped inside that purple band. Okay, so how does this look algebraically? Let's show that the limit as x approaches 3 of 8x plus 3 is 27. Now, you know that the limit as x approaches 3 of 8x plus 3 is 27. You know that because you can substitute 3. That's not hard. But it doesn't satisfy this definition, and I only did a bit of hand-waving to say, well, you just sub in the 3. That's not really rigorous. So uh, a couple of pieces of advice. Uh, first, you want to relate the gap to the absolute value of x minus c. And by relate the gap, I mean you want to talk about the difference between your function and your limit value and the difference between x and your c value. This is c, this is l, this is your function. So I want to connect this gap to this difference. Well, this gap is absolute value of 8x plus 3 minus 27. And that happens to be the absolute value of 8x minus 24. So I'm looking to make a connection between this and this. And I notice that this is 8 times x minus 3. Now here's the thing. I want this to be less than epsilon. This is going to be less than epsilon. So here's the trick. We choose a delta in terms of epsilon. Well, here's the trick. Here's the thing. I need the absolute value of x minus 3 to be less than delta. Hmm. Hmm. I need this. I need that. No, no. I need this. Huh. Wait a second. Because, well, let's see. Let's do it this way. Can I do it with magic pen? I can. Take a look at that right there. Can you get absolute value x minus 3 by itself? Yes, you can. Of course you can. The absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 8. So as long as delta is less than or equal to this thing, we do just fine. And so we say that this is our delta. And so as long as delta is epsilon over 8 or less, we are good to go. And so, so we would write it out and say, choose delta equal to epsilon over 8. 
then the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 8. And so 8 times x minus 3 is less than epsilon. And so the absolute value of 8x minus 24 is less than epsilon. And so the absolute value of f of x minus 27 is less than epsilon. And we're done. But really, if you can pick up, oh, magic pen, if you can pick up this piece, you are in great shape. Going from here to here, you are in excellent, excellent shape. Okay, that's all I want to say about epsilon delta. The rest I'll say when we get to class. Thanks, everybody.